Instead of jumping straight to tricks whenever we're comparing fractions, let's approach this concept at a more conceptual level. Let's start with models and then we'll build more to an abstract way of thinking. Let's represent comparing 3 fourths and 2 thirds. Here I can see that 3 fourths is a lot closer to 1 whole than 2 thirds. We can model this same concept on a number line. We just have to make sure that students draw the same size holes when comparing fractions. Once they're comfortable with representing comparing fractions, then we can introduce some strategies. Let's start with a half benchmark. Depending on the two fractions that are given, sometimes using a halfway benchmark will automatically tell you which fraction is greater or less. So have your students remember those fractions that are equal to one half. Another strategy for comparing fractions is to use common denominators. This is where your students will list the multiples of the denominator and basically use equivalent fractions to help them compare fractions that have the same denominator. Now that we have a couple of strategies for comparing fractions, now we can have them determine which strategies are more efficient depending on the fractions that are given. This would be a great time to have your students discuss why they chose a strategy over the other and why does it make sense to use more efficient strategies. Now back to that trick for just cross multiplying to determine which fraction is greater. I want to show you why that works and where is this 16 and 21 coming from. When I list my multiples for my denominator, I find the common denominator of 24. Then by finding those equivalent fractions, the 16 was my numerator and 21 is my other numerator. So we essentially just use that common denominator strategy.